Hello, I'm Adrian and in this video I'm going to be talking about Love Comes in Spurts by Richard Hell and the Voidoids. This is a classic bit of New York punk music taken from the album, the, the seminal album as, as music critics would have it, uh, Blank Generation, came out I think in the mid-1970s and contained some amazing guitar work from two amazing guitar players, both of them New York guitar legends. We've got Ivan Julian who I think comes out of the left hand speaker on this recording and then in the other speaker we've got Robert Quine and uh, Robert Quine's long been one of my favorite guitar players. He's, um, he's just um, an amazing kind of bluesy punky energy about his playing. Um, he was also into kind of avant-garde jazz and you can hear that kind of influence in, in there as well and um, uh, just reading up about him just now there's a quote from uh, Mark Rebo saying that Robert Quine according to him basically wrote the book on uh, punk rock guitar soloing and uh, I have to agree with that I think. So um, what I'm going to do in this video I'm going to take you through how I think the song is played and uh, bearing in mind it is quite a raw and punky song I don't think it's something that you're ever going to be able to emulate exactly and it's probably a bit of a futile exercise trying to do that but um, I certainly found it interesting uh, examining what was going on um, in, in the guitar parts to this song and uh, I hope you find it interesting too. Introduction then goes like this and uh, it really is the definition of one of those weird sounding angular punk guitar parts and it's based off of this little three note shape here. We've got the 12th fret on the top string, 11th fret on the B and 10th fret on the G string. So it's a little diagonal shape and we're just going through this, those strings from high down to lows in a, in a group of three. So now the important thing here is that we're playing that in an eighth note rhythm so you get that kind of interesting rhythmic displacement effect going on. So the count here is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And I think actually on the introduction a couple of those notes might be missed out and replaced with rest. It sounds to me a bit more like this. Uh, but then elsewhere in the song when he plays it every note seems to be in there so kind of up to you how you want to do that exactly. Up to you how you want to pick this as well. There are certainly a few options. Um, you could try alternate picking all of it. Um, um, up, up, down, various options there. I think just play around until you, uh, until you find something that's comfortable. So that's the introduction. I think that's played by, by Robert Quine. Now I'm going to talk about the verse parts and I'm just going to take each part in turn. Uh, we've got two great guitar parts kind of going on throughout this song, both, both of them quite different. So I'm going to start with Quine's verse part and that's actually pretty straightforward. It just goes like this. just kind of going up the neck with this kind of rock and roll boogie pattern on the, on the lower strings. You probably know this kind of thing already. So it's starting um, on an A chord, you've just got an A power chord and then with your little finger you're just stretching up to, to add in the sixth and you've got and then we're just moving that on up the neck. So we're doing it uh, off of an A root note up to C up to D and then up to F and then that just just repeats. Um, there's a little detail I, I can hear on some of these chords a little bit of the D string coming through you know if you um, if you're barring down with your first finger then you you might just catch the same fret on the D string and that's quite nice. You let that note come through sometimes as well. So that's the that's the Robert Quine verse part. Now the Ivan Julian verse part is is really really interesting actually. Um, I have to listen quite closely to figure out exactly what was going on here. But it, it seems to me to be something like this. We've got um, something along those lines 
and uh, we're starting off down this end of the neck. If I just move so you can see that with a an A chord here, or an A power chord, just playing the open A string and the, the second fret on the D string, and then three to four on the A string, back to the power chord, and then playing playing the, the higher notes in an A chord. And then we're going to a kind of a, a part of a C chord really. I've got the C and the E here, third fret on the A string, second fret on the D. And then I'm putting down the third fret on the D to create a kind of C sus sound. So it's Then we've got this little idea a bit higher up the neck. We're moving up to the seventh position and we've got tenth fret on the D string. Nine, seven, back to uh, nine again. Perhaps sometimes just letting the the D note on the G string come through a little bit as well. So that, that's really kind of the, the chord progression here is A to C, and then this bit here is played over the D, and then we're going up higher again over the um, over the what is it the the F chord, and that goes like this. We've got so we're playing a like an F triad here, tenth fret on the D G and B. Playing that twice, then 11 to 12 on the A, 10 to 12 on the D. And then I think I can hear the 8th fret sometimes on the A, coming back to the start of the pattern. So, so if I just play all of that verse part for you so you can see how it fits together, we have 2, 3, something like that it's little variations and uh differences each time he plays that i think but that's roughly speaking what what is going on in the ivan julian verse part onto the chorus then and let me start with the i'm gonna start with the ivan julian part i think that kind of clearly outlines the the chords and as far as i can hear what, what he's doing on the chorus is um laying out those chords here with some A type bar chords. We're starting off with an open A chord and then we've got an E down to a D so just going with the vocal line at that point and then there's a little answering phrase which goes a little bit hard to pick out that exactly on the recording that's what it sounds like to me so it's a series of, of thirds we've got d and f sharp e and g f sharp and a all, all on the a and d strings so that's the ivan julian part and uh Moving on to the quine part, and there's just a really nice kind of counterpoint, if that's the, the right word, between these two parts, where, where Julian leaves a gap, Robert Quine kind of comes in with this kind of chord hit. Uh, so, so Quine's part, I think, is something like this. We've got... So on the first beat, there's some kind of A chord, maybe maybe that, or perhaps just a single A note. Then there's a rest, and then he's playing this really nice chord 
accent. And it, it, it took me a little bit of playing around to, to kind of discover exactly what he, he was doing. I, I tried out a few different different chord shapes. And uh, what I sort of finally decided on is it's either this or this. It could actually be a, a bit of both. It sounds like he, he varies what, what he's doing e each time. Uh, you can definitely hear this high B um, and then a C sharp. So that's the sixth fret on the G, seventh fret on the high E string. Then it's, it's either an F sharp at the seventh fret on the B string, which gives you this sound. Or, or else it's an E note on, on the B string. So you have this. Maybe a bit of both of those. So. so whatever you go with this, it's a nice sounding chord there. And then we've got this. Just a kind of fourth idea. We, we hit a D chord and then we've got this little shape. 7th fret on the G, 8 on the B. Moving that up 2 frets. Or, I mean, you could play those same notes on the top 2 strings. I think it's probably just all played on the B and G. And perhaps we've got a little bluesy C, C sharp, A at the end of that phrase. So let me just try and play Quine's chorus part as best as I can. We've got two, three, four. Like so. Then we've got uh, a reintro. And then we're into his amazing guitar solo. So let me talk you through uh, what, what I think is going going on there. Um, so starts off with um, this kind of double stop idea, which is kind of a bluesy thing, I suppose. We've got the, the 12th fret on the high E, 13 on the B. Then we've got a really high kind of extreme bend. Um, uh, I don't think you need to be too precise with this. It sounds like it's around the, the 18th fret. And it's one of those bends where it's, it's played a little bit messily and you can kind of catch the B string as you're, you're bending upwards. So you get that kind of... So a little bit hit, hit almost trying to get that, that effect. It kind of depends on exactly how you how you hit the bend, the, the setup of your, your guitar, but that's that's the kind of thing you want to go for there. Um, so yeah, sometimes you might catch the two notes, sometimes you might not. Coming down to the fifth fret and we've got some more double stops. Just double stops on the B and G strings at the fifth and seventh fret. Then uh, our opening double stop idea again, and it kind of the solo takes a kind of melodic turn here, and we've got a nice series of descending thirds. So we're going from that initial shape, kind of sliding down to the tenth and the twelfth frets. Sliding that shape down two more frets, and then again down to the seventh and eighth frets. So it's um, and then we've got this um, more double stops. So fifth fret, seventh fret. On, on the, the, the B and the G. The, the rhythm sounds like this. It's two and three and four and one. I think I can just hear a couple of muted hits in there as well. So one and two. And 
next lick is kind of a classic bit of Chuck Berry, really. Kind of weirdly, he kind of goes down to, to the G position here rather than staying in A, which is kind of a, a little bit unexpected, but, but sounds cool. And uh, that's just classic Chuck Berry bending on the on the sixth string and then double stop on the top two strings. And now I think I can hear a slide from five to four on the G and then second fret on the G. And the solo ends with that initial double stop shape again. And then I think he's ending it with that same shape moved up to the 15th and 16th frets and just kind of going mental on that. So uh, amazing solo. Um, I'll just try and put that all, all together as best I can. So we got, um, I'm just going to give it a bit of gain here as well. We've got two, three. <laughs> There we go, something like that. Gear for this video then, and I thought I'd bring my Mustang out today, which I haven't used in one of my videos for a long time, and it just, uh... gear for this video then, and I thought I'd bring my Mustang out today, which I haven't used in one of my videos for quite a long time, but it's a beautiful guitar, and it seemed to be appropriate for this particular song. Um, I think on the, the original recording, uh, Quine and Julian, they both played Fender Strats, and I have got a Strat, but I haven't got it here with me today, so I thought that the Mustang would fit the bill. It seems to sound quite good on this song. And this particular Mustang is a 1966 Fender Mustang. Uh, as far as I know, it's all original. I might well be doing a video looking at this guitar in, in a bit more detail. I might film that reasonably soon, so uh, look out for that. Now, my Mustang going into my uh, my mini pedal board here. Um, using a couple of pedals for this video, I was using the Wampler Tumnus for the uh, for the verse and chorus sound, and then for the guitar solo, I just kicked on this pedal here, which is a, a new acquisition. Actually, just getting to know this pedal, but I'm really liking what I've heard so far. It's a Hudson Broadcast, which is a, a particular kind of uh, overdrive slash distortion slash fuzz pedal um, really, really really sounds good uh, again I might do a video on that pedal um, in, in the future if, if anybody's interested amp wise over here just going into my Vox AC30 it's a 90s AC30 reissue into the uh, the normal channel I think and uh, those are my not particularly interesting settings that's it for today hope you have some fun learning to play this song you might like to take a look at my website as well, if you've not done so already. That's where I'll also be posting the music and the tab to this song. And also check out my Patreon page, which I just set up recently. That's just a way that you'll be able to help me out with a bit of cold, hard cash, which will enable me to carry on doing what I'm doing. So if you enjoy these lessons, you might like to consider that. That would be very much appreciated. Take care and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.